We are here today at the Crypto Compare Digital Asset Summit in London, in the old Bill and Gate fish market. I will be on a panel talking about venture capital funding. We're really looking forward to today. All the elite, the movers and shakers in the London blockchain space are here and in attendance. So, let's check it out. Chairs for us. I think so. Right. Turn your mic. Hi guys. Nice to see you. How nice are you? Nice to see you too. Thanks for standing in. Well no done, you. No problem. Okay, so this is gonna we're gonna riff. Um, okay. uh, so we had a little chat before. Um, it would be great if you guys could introduce yourselves and give us the high level of what you do. Shall I kick it off? Please, Jane. Okay, kick first of all, thank you so much for uh, having us here to speak. Uh, today has been absolutely awesome right since the start. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity. My name is Shane Kehoe. I am the co-founder of SVK Crypto. SVK Crypto is a venture capital firm based here in the fine city of London. We are a $50 million fund. We are known as an ecosystems fund, so we solely focus on projects being built out on the EOSIO protocol. We are backed by Block One, which is the creator of that protocol, and we are part of the EOS VC syndicate, alongside Mike Novogratz's Galaxy Digital and Eric Schmidt's Tomorrow VC. Really simple, we take equity stakes in companies that we're gonna build out on the EOS IO protocol. Thank you. Ami? Hi. Um, my name is Ami. I'm the co-founder of Spice VC. Uh, Spice is, uh, well, the first fully tokenized fund, so we're, We've started, uh, we're one of the first to go into the security token space, and that's where we invest as well. Okay. So we made 12 investments, in the, most of them in the security token space, um, and I'm now working on a new project also in the security token Definitely space. Definitely going to ask you about that. Okay. George? Hi, everyone. So I'm George McDonough. Um, I started the company uh, with my co-founder in early 2016. Uh, so we were one of the first token uh, investment companies in the world. We were set up specifically to allow uh, investors access to the crypto economy um, via a publicly listed share. Um, so we are a listed company on one of the London uh, uh, markets called the NEX. We have one of the longest uh, portfolios uh, uh, in the space in terms of in terms of active investment. And um, and yeah, so uh, we've had we've had a, a, a great three years. It's been it's been great fun. Um, so yeah, that's us. <laughs> And last but not least, James. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm James Roy Poulter from uh, The Reserve. Um, we were initially an advisory firm focused on helping traditional venture capitalists, investors, family offices understand what was actually happening in this space. Um, that's matured as the market has changed from a marketing-driven way that you raise capital in this industry to a more traditional way, where um, some of the, uh, the, the small investments that we've made off our own balance sheet over the last couple of years, we've stepped in at the kind of Series A, Series B stage, and we're now a, uh, a regulated with the FCA to manage and arrange deals and securities and actually help those companies access the very, very distributed set of capital that's interested in backing the best management teams um, in this space. I mean, there are not that many funds uh, in, in London that are actually writing checks into this. Uh, so it's, it's, it's difficult as an entrepreneur, but very briefly, yeah. Small funds helping later stage entrepreneurs raise capital. Okay. So we're supposed to today talk about how, to, how do you get funded? How, I got a cool project, I got a great idea, I need some money, how do I get you to give it to me, right? But I want to back up for just a little bit. So it's Tech Week in London this week, um, and a stat came out that said that out of all the unicorns in um, Europe, um, most of them are here in the UK. I think we've got 17 or 19 you know, tech unicorns in the UK versus 22 in Silicon Valley. So you know, Europe is really heating up. Um, you know, where, where is that investment coming from? Um, where, you know, how are you assessing talent? Um, you know, what projects are interesting to you? How do we create more unicorns? So I want to kind of cover all of that um, in 20 minutes. <laughs> But I guess let's start first with, um, I've got a cool idea, I've got some really cool tech, um, I need some funding, let's take ICOs off the table, okay? 
So if we're just looking at straight VC investment, um, what's more important, the tech or the team? I'll kick it off. Um, you've come to uh, me with the question, we've got a cool idea. Great. So what? So does everybody. Right. I'm not interested in cool ideas. I'm interested in businesses over the long term and not necessarily how you're going to generate revenue because without revenue you don't have a business. Yeah. It's what can we well, bring... Some people do. They do. Some people do. But there has to be some type of monetization in the future. Out of that, are you're just generating further serious A, B, C, D and constantly getting your rounds to increase in value which will actually end bad because at the end of the day the business won't generate the cash flow in order to sustain the business. So roadmap is important to you? Of course roadmap's important. The project's like, important. Absolutely. And, and I'm not interested in a pipe dream. Like, I'm giving you my hard-earned cash. I'm giving you investors money, right? I have to manage that capital correctly. That's how I get judge remunerated. That's, that's, that's my baby. I have to go out and find businesses that will be better than anybody else and that have an understanding, an execution, an idea, a tech, and that will work day and night to make that happen. And even then, it's still one in 10. Even then, the failure rate in VC is still really, really sure. high. Business is tough. So don't come to me with a dream. Come to me with a very well thought out business with an examples of how you've executed in the past in a market which is timing. Because when you look at different businesses, you can have the best business. But if the tech's not built out or if the adoption's not there, it's not going to happen. It's all about market timing with the right team at the right place with the right tech. But more importantly, it's not just about allocating capital. It's not just about putting money into the deal. Everybody's got money. All money is not equal. It's about what else we bring. As venture capital guys, we have to bring an enormous amount of value to you. The exchange is both ways. Yep. So when you're picking a VC partner, don't just chase the books. Don't just chase that. Chase someone who can actually help you with introductions, business development, hiring, managing the business. So you have to be a success. It's a partnership and it works both ways. Okay, I mean, what's, what's Spice's view on tech versus the talent? So is it the team? Is it the idea? Is it the project? Is it... Uh, Sp Spice what's focused the... on investing in a very specific area. So maybe unlike uh, funds which are more generic, uh, we were uh, an ecosystem fund. So we were looking at specific uh, companies building the ecosystem for security tokens. So we basically mapped up the area of what security token is, you know, the blockchain level, the application level, the support around it, everything around security token, what needs to be built. And, and actually when, when we started, most of it wasn't built and still most of it isn't built. So, so what, do you, what do you do? So when you're we, looking to invest money, you have an idea very specifically where you're looking to invest. Yeah, we have money. general. We have general. Do you direction. build it yourself? Well, we 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 did build a company ourselves uh, to begin with, uh, Securitize, uh, which is a very successful company in the market. But the other 11 companies in the portfolio we didn't build. We actually invested in. Um, I would I would say this in, in, in connection to to what you were saying. Uh, for me, the team is definitely the the, the number one uh, element. Now the team comes in with a with a direction that is the right direction and with the right concept and you know you can see execution at the beginning of a product usually we, we invest early enough and as an entrepreneur i know that uh, the actual product is going to change at least three or four more times until you actually reach it and they will throw it away and start again so and they will pivot and they will move but i want to see that the team is there with the passion sure. i want to see that they're chasing me i want to see that they're grafting i want to see them in the market everywhere i go uh, every person I talk to, I want to hear, hey, this guy called me. And, and, and you can see those people, and you, you can see that those people that are, are uh, real movers and shakers yeah. and, and hungry, you can see them operate in the market, while you can see on, on another company, you can see somebody comes to you and they, and they pitch you, and it's boring, and then they go, and they, you never hear from them, and you never hear their name again in the market. So, you know, we won't, we won't invest in people like that. So, George... Same question, Tucker sure. team. These guys have kind of covered quite a lot of that. So what is that special thing when somebody comes in? Is it the person? Is it the idea? Um, I think I think it's 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 definitely, you know, when we look at projects at KO1, it's definitely team first. Uh, um, I, I think that fr from from the early days Let me let me just interrupt you. Break yeah. that down. So what about the team? Is it their so, so demonstrated subject matter expertise? Yeah. Is it they've had a grown-up job before? 
Is it that they're you yes, know, a, yes. a genius? That's all part. That's all part. A boy wonder. No, well, that's that's all part of it. Um, I think I think in, in in the early days there was the sense that you know, and it's true that the developers were the magicians that were building this stuff. I mean, you know, all, all the all the exhibit all the exhibits and the chatting and all, and, and all these things that come with these these events. It's it's the it's the people who are coding. You know the 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 the, but, the, the but key people. But do they know how to run sound businesses? No, no, not 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 necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, but that's and that's where the team comes in, right? So 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 you over time you begin to get a sense of the network and where the credibility is in this space. Uh, the people who have uh, uh, performed before and delivered before before, um, and also have mutual respect amongst their cohort of other people. And and so what we did right at the beginning was say, okay, let's get. A, a group of developers that we trust their opinion, right? Because they know how to look at this space, they know how to see what's coming, and because the space is still so small, their, their opinion was, 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 was well, carried a lot of weight. And so when we came to look at teams, it's almost as much as mapping who these people are against the rest of the network that we've created. Um, and that gives us a sense of, of, of where they've come from and what, what, they could do, what they could do again. And then the, you know, the idea of where they fit into the ecosystem comes next. Because of course, over time, and crypto knows this better than anything, pivoting is, is a key aspect of what's happening. You've seen something, everything's running at 1,000 miles an hour. So by the time you've started something, you might be redundant. That particular project that you were trying to do is, has been done somewhere else. Uh, uh, and, so, and so it's the team that, allow, uh, that allows you to overcome those, those areas and end up with, with something that adds great value to the community as a whole. So James, you and I have talked quite a lot about your vision, your approach, how you work with clients. You've shared with me in the past about, you know, it's absolutely person first. You know, you've got to fall in love. And then you just run around together and you do this project, you know, together. It's a partnership. So, you know, tell me a little about that and, and, and what makes you fall in love? Like, what's the spark? Sure. Don't get romantic now, James. Don't yeah. get romantic on me. <laughs> Don't do that. So look, I think it takes time. So it's not quite love at first sight, if we were to use the analogy. I think if we look at the companies that we have invested in and we have our reputation behind at the moment, you know, it's taken us probably on average a year uh, from, from meeting them to get comfortable, but we're typically identifying them much earlier than most other people. Um, and I think that, you know, if we were to, well, I think that if you look at the reserve, um, and again, before we were investing and before we were Broking, we were advising, and we had a network of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of funds and, and individuals, high networks around the world that were interested in this space, and we got a reputation with them for understanding how this space works, for being right, you know, visibly right on stage and in writing, um, and, and basically that's allowed. That's meant we've had a, an incredible deal flow sharing network, and people seek us for opinions very, very early, early on. We also have a 30-person strong uh, venture scout network that are all under contract with us, that are all incentivized to send the best deals that they come across to us. Um, we see an awful lot of stuff. Like if you look at the, you know, for, I reckon we probably see three to four hundred things that float through our team before something that we actually we actually back. And like, but when we actually do that, I think there's a reality looking: is it is it team or tech? Well, if we were being uh, realistic here, um, what it is is who else is investing in the round. Like, there are very, very, very few leaders in this space. Uh, most people do not understand the technology, do not understand how you create value in this space, and they're just followers. And so, as entrepreneurs, you need to work out, okay, your team needs to be, okay, who is that lead, you know? Who is that person that is gonna, is gonna take the leap of faith and, and come alongside you? And I think, like, we wanna do a better and better job of, of doing that, and it may meaning more when we do step in alongside someone. Um, but I think for us, when we do commit to someone, it is, it is an absolute commitment. And we talk about alliance, alliance, execution, and perspective in decentralized futures. And like, alliance is a really key word for us. Like, when we commit to someone, we are, I mean, we will give absolutely everything, and, and, we, and we'll do everything that we can. Um, I think also for us, it's like we genuinely care about the space. Like, like we believe that the technology that we are building as a community is unbelievably important. Um, and I think that comes with a lot of responsibility. And, 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 and I think the final thing I will say when it comes to team is that, um, you know, you really have to think, I think there's a, investors in this space need to step up as well and play a more active role, particularly at the board level, um, as part of that team. I think if you were to look, you know, we talk a lot about governance as a community and like we're trying to, how do we govern this world or govern the de-sovereign money? Like we can't even govern a company. Like mm -hmm. it's generally appalling. Uh, 
Uh, and, and so I think you know, that's, that's part of making that the, the team better around is, is more than just a couple of engineers. It's, uh, it's, it's leadership from the investment community as so, well. Yeah. So segue for me into my next kind of question around coaching, development, sitting on the board, steering the ship. What is the responsibility that you have? Obviously, you know, you want to return on your investment. You're vested in ensuring the success of the firm. Um, but I do, I do see lots of great ideas and lots of really smart people um, that don't necessarily know how to execute. So an idea is one thing. Execution is completely another. It's right? all about execution. It is all about execution, 100%. You can have as many ideas as you want, but unless you can execute it, unless you can get traction, unless you can build it, You've got so to fight how, how do you specifically, how do you guys help coach, mentor, introduce, lead, champion? Like, what's the role for you guys when you finally do identify those projects you want to invest in I, I think to ensure their success? I think it's very similar to, to what James has said. It's, it's all the above, all the time. Like, you're having a relationship. For us, we have a 10-year view. Our fund is an extended 10-year fund. So we are going to be embedded into those investments for up to 10 years, depending upon what happens if there's a buyout, if there's a liquidity event. But we are embedded with them. So you've got to get to the point of very quickly, how do you deal with disputes? Like how, how do you have a dispute resolution policy? Of course you're gonna fall out. You almost wanna fall out as soon as you possibly can, so you then understand where that person is and how they deal with it. Business is tough, and especially business in like the venture take, capital take the first world. Yeah, and yeah. that's okay. We're we're mature with our with our with our investments. We understand that things always don't go that way. But you really have to realize that the person has, and I think as two of the gentlemen said, determination, passion. It's so important because sometimes stuff's going to going to go away. Sometimes it's not. You're going to have setbacks. It's the way life is. It's how you deal with those setbacks that makes you have that determination, that grit, and that execution. I think for us depending upon whether we're investing in C to Series D, depending if we're investing in a, 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 a $2 million round to a $30 million round. It depends, of course, who else is in those rounds with us. We've invested just recently with Kleiner Perkins. We've been with Galaxy Digital. We've been with Google Ventures. Uh, we've been with Linden Labs, Block Tower Capital. So each of those firms all bring something massively different to the table. I think we try to help out as best as we can. We're certainly not experts. We certainly don't have the deepest pockets or the longest track record, but we're really, really, really focused on building out the community. That's what we really pioneer. We own the home turf of London, and we go to, to each and every investment and bring them into our community and help out at each and every point. And by the way, seats on the board, absolutely. Uh, advising on hiring, absolutely. Helping with corporate strategy is an absolute must, and each and everything along the way. As long as you have that relationship with the, the the in investor or investment, then we're all in. And you have to be, because it can never be a situation where you weren't committed, and because of that, the investment failed. It can never be on you. We're all in 100%. Can I jump in? I'm, uh, I'm a little different. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a matter of style. Um, I think that uh, uh, as an it's investor... It's absolutely a matter of style. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm trying to get to here, yeah. is that there's not one flavor of partner or money or VC and it's important to I'll stick with the love analogy you know you 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 need to find your match yeah don't get right? romantic so, on me so, now. don't get romantic so my my view is and my, my what I try to do is to help as much as I can but not not overdo oversteer. it not okay. oversteer not over I mean the entrepreneurs are there to do it if they can't do it themselves they're not going to do it by me doing uh, you know a few pushes but I want to help them as much as I can mainly with connections with uh, uh, ideas with uh, uh, feedback, uh, anything that they ask. But I'm very much aware, as a former entrepreneur, that uh, entrepreneur today, that if you have an, a VC that invested in you, if they pick up the phone and they tell you to meet X, you would say yes, and you meet X, even if you don't want to meet them, even if it's a waste of your time. And uh, I don't want to be a time waster as well. So you have to have this right balance of helping when you're needed, and butting out, and letting people do their job, uh, and, and not being overbearing. I think this is a, a very kind of uh, important balance. And sometimes they need you more, uh, especially when there's trouble and they need backup and they can't raise their next round and they need some, you know, uh, some, some support. Um, and sometimes they just need you to, to back off and not waste their time. Yeah, um, we're, we're very similar. Um, I think for us, if you've picked the team correctly, then you can get out of their way. And when they come to you and they need something, then, then of course we're there. I think from our perspective, the most important thing is participation afterwards. 
So when they've launched their protocol, when they've when they've uh, 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 when they need validators, when they need people to to, to add uh, uh, um, you know a resource into into their into what they've built, that's where we should back up our money. So if you look at something like Nexus Mutual, which has this 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 pool of uh, of cover around smart contracts. Um, they have a, a, a pool of ether at the moment that you know we, we seed funded them, and then we've come back and, and added more funds into, into their pool. Not from an investment perspective, we don't get more tokens or anything like that. We're just seeding their 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 their, their pool of, of, of cover for for smart contracts. And it's the same in the in the proof of stake world. If you if you have a a, 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 a protocol that needs validating, ha, ha, you know learn what validating is, participate in the process. Of, of, of getting of, of allowing these protocols to, 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 to live and breathe and, and get off the ground once they've actually built them. So we concentrate on that especially. Yeah, I think there's a minimum for every investor, um, or at least I think investors need to start working as a group to understand who's going to be the representative of that group in that in that in that vehicle of just good governance and ensuring good governance. And that doesn't mean meddling or stepping in. It just means like ensuring that founders don't just use the money to buy a yacht or whatever, right? Or like let's I'll work on it for six months and then give up and launch the next project, which just happens like constantly in this project, in this space. The number of founders that are running five companies and investing in twenty and sitting on six boards is just stupid, right? Like, like no one gets anything done, um, but I think like you know the example I would give you from the more the angle that we take, and it's why we we've, we've got regulated is because I mean I think we would probably agree that Andreessen Horowitz and A16Z is pretty good at choosing uh, companies. But I think what they have found is that you know they choose they choose early and they provide so much value. I mean they've got all 150 of their investment professionals in the U.S. regulated to help them manage and arrange deals and to work alongside those entrepreneurs. And it's like we look at management teams and actually we give the example of, of, of Dusk that we had been working with for about the last year and a half out in the Netherlands and they were trying to raise capital kind of Q3 last year at the worst time of the market. And, and, and I think the short version is this, that they're an absolutely incredible team building some of the most interesting technology which is out there and you will hear about them much more in the coming months. Um, but um, they couldn't really raise very much money, enough to survive, um, but there's not very much in Amsterdam, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, particularly after the funds had all been destroyed. And, and um, you know, we stepped in and got them a much, much broader range of capital and that was the largest sale of tokens there was in about a six month you know, uh, you know, window period. Um, but yeah, so again, so we commit, but I guess it's like, you know, we are, or we, we actually are sort of a charity, but like, uh, we're not quite a charity. Um, and so uh, we need to be remunerated for the work that we do. And I think the, the same reason A16Z thinks that the work that they do is valuable enough to, you know, to be regulated and to be remunerated in that way is why we've taken those steps, because we think it's unbelievably impactful on the companies and the management teams that we work with. So you mentioned Amsterdam, you mentioned London. Where are you seeing the hot spots of innovation? I think it's I think it's it's shifting massively. Um, obviously, from? well, obviously from Silicon Valley. Okay, so when we look back at the you know early days of hardware, the 1970s and 80s, and then moving into the internet as we know it and the technology companies, and I think the real last wave, although there is obviously amazing technology coming out of Silicon Valley. I believe that the next wave of multi-billion dollar IPOs that will come through the capital markets will be coming out of this space, will be coming out of the blockchain space. I think when we look back and we see the Lyfts or the, the Ubers or we see the Facebooks or the, the kind of sharing our social media economy, I think that's kind of coming to an end now. I think there's a real shift going on and I think the next multi-billion dollar IPOs, which will be in the next three to four to five years, will be coming out of this space. It's our job to find those companies now and align ourselves. Um, I think that that will shift from the typical Silicon Valley, and I think really it's very diversified. I mean, when you look at some of the technology um, computer developers, when you look at places like Israel, which has an amazing community, when you look at the likes of Eastern Europe into Poland, an amazing community of developers, when you look at some of pockets of Southeast Asia, also amazing developers, and of course London, the blockchain capital of the world, of course, um, when you start to look at what's going on in the fintech space as well, and when you start to see how the tokenization of, of, of typical type of, of, of equities, fixed income, uh, real estate and certainly somewhere where you guys really are successful and when you start to see the whole fintech payments on ramps and off ramps i believe london will be a real but, key but place for that let's look at that for a quick second i, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this but the fintech space in london specifically was highly curated there was a government initiative uh, they championed innovate finance 
the incumbents were really almost, not forced, but highly encouraged to get in sandboxes, to onboard customers from fintech companies, um, because the UK really wanted to be the fintech champion, right? And, and I don't know, I mean, other than perhaps Switzerland and maybe Gibraltar to some degree, we've not had, you know, a, a, a big market say, we want to own this space and, and we're going to be the blockchain capital. We're still kind of all, there's pockets, I guess is what I'm saying. So you and I had a really interesting conversation about um, infrastructure and does the actual infrastructure exist that we can really scale? So kind of going back to Andreas this morning, talking about the scalability issue. Um, do, do you find that that will impact where these opportunities arise? Definitely. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of the opportunities in the blockchain space are actually moving towards this financial financial business. And, uh, and a lot of the things around blockchain that people talked about that are not financial are taking longer to material, let's, let's mm -hmm. put it this way. So finance... And, and, and blockchain, that's it. If we're talking about money, Bitcoin, if we're talking about uh, lending and we're talking about uh, uh, where we are, digital securities, uh, everything is about fintech. And there are mainly two areas in the world where, where you can find a lot of talent and a lot of banks that will work with you. That's in London and that's in New York and maybe a little bit in you know, places like Singapore and Hong Kong. But London and New York are two major hubs uh, for this thing. So I, I'm now... <laughs> Uh, you asked me earlier about initiating. I'm actually initiating a new company now. And we're building a, a blockchain for security tokens, which is dedicated to institutional investors and uh, to the institutional space, what I would call institutional grade blockchain platform for digital securities. Yeah. So the people that I'm talking to are either here in London or in New York. Okay. Pretty much yeah, that. Financial it. capitals. F financial capitals. And I think that. Uh, Having, we are going to see a lot of growth here in London uh, for this type of businesses and, and in New York as well. These are the two areas where I think the most, most of this uh, market will, will grow because a lot of the talent is here. Uh, people that are used to be in the banking environment are opening up to this new world. They're getting used to it. We're escaping. Yeah, <laughs> slowly. You got out you know, alive, did you? Month by month, it's getting better. I'm he hearing better, uh, you know, and, and pretty much all the banks are now running between five and ten POCs or, yeah. or things like yeah. that. So that, that's the situation that I'm seeing right now, and I expect it to grow and accelerate. George, what our, our focus is you? Our focus is decentralized applications and protocols. So they spark <laughs> everywhere. The whole, the whole idea is that you get people uh, involved in your project um, all over the world. And I think that's one of the reasons why the, 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 the VC space in the, in the token world is quite sociable, because and it is geographic as well. It's like it's it's good to have a partner in London and a partner in in Hong Kong and a partner sure. in Silicon Valley because you can you 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 can spark these networks um, and and really that's that that's what it's all about for us. So it's it's less it's less about the financial capital world uh, for us. It's more about where the community has taken hold um, for a particular project. Um, and and we would we would go to those places. And, and, and be amongst be amongst those people if 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 if, if there's a particular hotspot um, for, for for whatever that uh, uh, protocol or application is. Okay. So we're not we're not tied to You're not, yeah, jurisdictionally not not jurisdictionally tied. No. Tied. James, what about you? Yeah, I mean I, mean, I live on the road um, because we need to be the best talent is all over the world that's working on this space. Um, the vast majority of teams are decentralized in, in, in some form. Um, if you want the world's best talent, you pretty much have to work in that way these days. Um, and the network of capital is very distributed. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, constantly all over the place because it, it matters for what we do. So there's no one area that you think is going to be the next Silicon Valley? Isn't that a great thing? Yeah, isn't that a great thing? I, I, yeah. I, think, I, think, yeah. I, think, I think I personally I agree. think it's a great thing. Yeah, I yeah. totally agree. Um, okay, we're almost out of time. I didn't leave time for questions again. I don't even know if I'm supposed to. I'm really sorry, guys. Um, tell us, if somebody has a crappy idea, but they're a super awesome person with a great team, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, you can hit me up across any social media. If you put a SVK crypto into Yahoo, Google, or whichever search engine you use, uh, you'll find our website, uh, you'll find our YouTube, you'll find our Telegram, 
and uh, you'll also find our meetups. We've got a meetup going on next Tuesday night, actually focusing on women and blockchain, and also the gaming space, which we're very passionate about. So SVK Crypto, come into our Telegram, you'll find me. Amin? Um, so I'm, uh, I'm mostly on uh, a Twitter, okay. uh, at Ami Ben David. So uh, check it out. I'm, I'm <laughs> writing some stuff that uh, most crypto people don't like. So uh, <laughs> like uh, for controversial Twitter feeds, <laughs> yeah. follow Ami Ben David. That's me. Okay. And, uh, but you can reach me on my uh, email, Ami at spicevc.com. Great. Thank you. Um, so for us, we have a Twitter handle, which is at KL1PLC. Um, we have a blog on Medium. Um, where we sort of chart about all the weird and wonderful places that we go and the people that we meet and the stuff that we're interested in. Um, and, on, and on our website, there's a contact form. Um, you can send the stuff through that. Great. Cool. Okay. Uh, I have an amazing team. Dermot and Georgina, do you want to wave? They're like much better versions of me. Uh, that know much more than me. Um, so I'd say talk to Dermot and Georgina. Otherwise, you can get me on jrp at thereserve.world. Great. And Tina, thank you very much for filling in. Yes, you were not supposed you. to actually uh, chair this today. How was it? How did I do? So big yeah, round of applause for Tina. Yeah, well done, Tina. Yeah, thank you, Tina. Well done for stopping in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Thank Thanks you for having me. Cheers. Thank you guys. Thank you, Jens. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.